Hello friends, in this video we'll study about the taiga type of climate and the tundra type of climate. Under the Köppen scheme of classification, the taiga type is represented by alphabets D and W where D stands for cold snow forest climates and W for wet, sorry winter dry type of climate. And the winters here are very severe and they are quite severe compared to the humid continental or Laurentian type of climate. And then we'll study about the tundra type which is represented by alphabets E and T where E stands for cold climates and T stands for tundra type where there is no true summer. And then we have polar ice cap type of climate which is a severe form of tundra climate. Here the ground is covered by few hundred meters thick ice which are called as ice caps. So the name polar ice cap type of climate. And then we have highland type of climate which is a form of tundra or taiga type of climatic condition. For example, we have Siachen Glacier which represents a tundra type of climatic region and we have parts of Himalayas which represent sub-arctic type of climates and especially this type of climates in the highlands occur at certain elevations very near to the snow line. The taiga type of climate occurs within 50 to 70 degrees north and south of the equator and in the southern hemisphere there is no significant landform in these latitudes that is 50 degrees to 70 degrees south of equator and hence this particular type of climatic region is absent in the southern hemisphere. And the important regions which have taiga type of climate are the central Canada, parts of Alaska and parts of Labrador region of Canada. This is the Labrador, Labrador region and then we have the Siberian region of Russia. So most of the Russia has this particular type of climate. And then we have Scandinavian countries, Fennos Scandinavian countries like Norway, Sweden and Finland. So these are the countries with the taiga type of climatic conditions. This particular type of climate occurs just below Arctic Circle and it merges into the Arctic Tundra. So the ones which the climatic region which is present to the north of taiga is called as Arctic Tundra. And to the south it merges into or fades into the steppe type of climate. We know that these regions have prairies and then we have Asiatic steppes and these particular climatic conditions are just to the south of taiga type of climatic regions. Coming to temperatures, summers are very warm and the temperature can be as high as 25 degrees Celsius and this seems to be quite abnormal to a level or at these latitudes which are high latitudes but due to the influence of continentality, continentality that is uh, their location within deep within the continents can lead to higher temperatures. We know that continents get hot or cold very quickly compared to the oceans and these particular landforms in the taiga climatic regions are very wide and hence they are influenced by continentality and summer months can so uh, be the summer temperatures can be as high as 20 to 25 degrees Celsius and in winters it can be below freezing and this is also due to continentality. So when, they, when the regions are affected by continentality, the oceanic influence is quite insignificant. So in Russia, nearly all rivers are frozen. This is how extreme the climate is. The permafrosts are absent. Permafrosts are nothing but the frozen soil. So soil is usually frozen in extreme tundra type of climatic regions. And in the taiga type, they are usually absent because the soil is covered by snow, which is a bad conductor of heat. Coming to precipitation, here the precipitation is quite low only about 38 to 60, uh, 63 centimeters and most of it occurs in the summer months. In the winter months, most of the precipitation occurs in the form of snow. So if we take a look at the climatic graphs, we can see how huge the annual temperature range is. For example, in the Siberian region, we can see the summers can be as, the summer temperatures can be as high as 23 degrees Celsius, whereas the winter temperatures can fall up to minus 50 degrees Celsius. So there is about 50 to 60 uh, degrees Celsius of annual range of temperature difference. And then we have the Alaska region which is under the influence of ocean, uh, oceans that is the oceanic influence is quite significant as a result the annual temperature range is comparatively lower. Coming to the natural vegetation most of the trees occur in the form of conifers. We know that conifers are the most prominent feature of the higher latitudes and beyond the temperate region that is in the sub-arctic and arctic region wherever there are, there are trees present most of them are a kind of conifer trees and the most important species are pine fir, douglas fir and larch usually spruce and larch 
occur in the lower latitudes in the subarctic region and the other types like pine fir etc occur in the higher latitudes in the subarctic region so the taiga type of climate got its name because of the word taiga which is a russian word for coniferous forests and we know that coniferous forests are the ones which are examples for softwood trees and hence the lumbering industry is quite profitable in this particular region coming to the characteristics of coniferous forests they are of moderate density and they are evergreen and leaves remain for as long as 5 years so this is a typical feature of the taiga type of uh, climatic region or the coniferous forests which are a part of taiga type of climatic region and they are conical in shape especially to prevent snow accumulation so can so that they can uh, they don't have to break their branches due to accum accumulation of snow and the leaves are leathery small and thick and they are needle shaped especially to check evaporation in summer months which are very warm we know that summer months can have temperatures up to 20 to 25 degrees celsius and this can be quite de detrimental as most of the trees might lose moisture in the form of transpiration transpiration is nothing but loss of water vapor from stomata of Uh, leaves and soils are poor and they are excessively leached and are very acidic and the humus con humus content is very low we know that here the leaves can be on the tree for about 5 years so usually the shedding of leaves doesn't occur too fr uh, frequently and as a result the humus contents content would obviously be low because of less mass available for decomposition along with that the climate is very extreme that is the cold temperatures are very high as a result in winter months the amount of decomposed matter is also quite low as a result the humus content will be very low soils are usually poor because of extreme cold conditions so soils usually don't develop in certain regions where the temperatures are extreme let it be very warm regions or very cold regions and this type of coniferous forests occur just below the snow line in the himalayas and this particular type of forests occur mostly on the northern slopes of himalayas which are very gentle whereas the southern slopes are very steep and the soil development is very poor as a result usually the southern slopes don't have this but uh, any type of forest because of the steep slopes so if this is northern slope it would be uh, comparatively gentle whereas the southern slopes of himalayas are very steep as a result here we don't have any significant forests whereas in the northern slopes we have most of the forest varieties and just below the snow line we have this kind of forests which are called as coniferous forests and trapping is one important occupation we know that coniferous forests are a very huge forests we can see in the map where they extend for about thousands of kilometers and hence they are home for various wild animals and because of the extreme winter conditions the wild animals have great fur on their body and this fur can be used for making various uh clothes since especially to protect from winter winter seasons as a result the fur is of high demand in this particular region and as the months get colder the quality of fur quality and thickness of fur increases and the canada and siberian region have official fur farms where people stay in a wooded house for a very long time in the winters and they use this particular location to hunt animals using their rifles but the most important industry of the uh, taiga region with coniferous trees is the lumbering industry we know that here the wood is softwood and softwood has a lot of advantages compared to the hardwood when it comes to lumbering because softwoods occur in pure stands and most of them and the species are very less in number as a result this particular woodlands are of great economic importance and this is the most important occupation of both canada as well as a uh, parts of russia and machines in the modern days replaces the lumberjacks lumberjacks are nothing but the wood cutting contract laborers who were taken to the uh, highland regions or the northern regions of canada and siberia during winter months so they worked all throughout the winter felling logs and these logs were transported through the rivers but in the modern days machines replace lumberjacks and the industry is quite quick because of the, because of the use of machines and the most important advantage is the rivers which are frozen in the winter so the the logs which are cut in the winter months are uh, dragged into the rivers which are frozen and once the summer comes the water melts and this particular wood can float on the water because it is soft wood and it is it uh, it moves towards the downstream where there is there are um, many sawmills so this particular wood can float for a very long distance 
and hence it can be uh, the reverse can be used as a cheap cheap means of transportation and in the sawmills they are converted into uh, wood pulp and new sprint and various other raw materials so usually canada is leading in new sprint production whereas usa leads in wood pulp production so wood pulp can be used for various purposes like making of cardboards paper etc and all these uh, products of timber industry are exported to the rest of the world so very little softwood is burnt as fuel because of its great economic importance and sweden is exporting lot of matches which is obtained from the lumbering industry so most of the countries that is fennos scandinavian as well as parts of canada usa and parts of siberian region have significant taiga forests and they can be used for quite profitable timber industry and this particular wood pulp is also used for making rayon we know that rayon is an example for synthetic fiber which is obtained from a natural source which is wood pulp so what are the factors that encourage lumbering in this particular region the first important factor is limited species we know that there are only few species uh, pines uh, spruce and fir which occur in the northern part and then we have larch and other varieties which occur in the southern part so they are they occur in pure stands or homogeneous group and hence their commercial importance is very high compare this with the tropical regions where there are high number of species and also they don't occur in homogeneous groups or pure stands as a result uh, the timbering industry or lumbering industry in the tropical region is not quite developed as in the case of the uh, arctic or I mean the subarctic region like the taiga type of climatic region and in winter sap ceases to flow so most of the lumbering is activity is carried out in winter because we know that there are various advantages like the snow covered soil which are helpful in dragging the logs to a very large distance and along with that the sap is nothing but the gum and all other secretions made by the trees so when this ceases to flow the lumbering activity becomes quite easy and the snow covered ground as we have talked makes logging as well as haulage very easy because you don't have to Uh, load or unload logs to a very huge trucks you can simply drag them to the rivers and logs flow to the sawmills downstream and the rivers unfreeze in spring or uh, spring or summer months so unfrozen uh, rivers help in transportation of these huge logs and is it is important in canada norway and sweden and also the parts of russia but in russia the rivers are frozen this is a great disadvantage along with that the rivers flow towards the northern uh, towards north and this is also a great disadvantage we'll see that in the russian taiga most of the siberian rivers drain poleward and this particular factor is a great disadvantage to the uh, disadvantage to the russian lumbering industry and the rivers are frozen for three quarters of the year because of extreme conditions and the sawmills cannot cannot survive as most of the river downstream rivers flow in the tundra region and it is very cold and sawmills cannot be established there so in certain regions the electricity required for sawmill uh, required for sawmills can be obtained by cheap hydroelectricity we know that these regions are covered by snow and the melting snow gives lot of water and there are significant high ranging mountains in the region as a result the hydroelectricity can be easily harnessed so if you look at the sawmill sawmill industry or lumbering industry in uh, canada we know that lumbering is carried out in this particular belt where there is significant taiga forest and to the north there is a forest but it is uh, quite inaccessible because of extreme conditions most of the lumbering activity is confined to central and southern canada so here we can see the rivers flow towards south as a result the logs can be transported towards south using these rivers and the density of sawmills is quite high in this particular region in the eastern parts of canada this is because of the st lawrence waterway which provides cheap transportation for the finished goods so here we have the st lawrence waterway which connects the atlantic ocean and the great lakes region so that material which is manufactured in the sawmills can be transported to both inland of usa as well as to the rest of the world through the st lawrence waterway so compare this with china i mean sorry russia we have all the rivers which are flowing major rivers which are flowing towards north that is polewards so we can see all these rivers ob and see all these rivers are flowing northwards and we know that this particular climatic region is affected by the tundra type of climate and it is extremely cold and establishing sawmills would not be a economic 
condi- I mean economic alternative along with that the seas here are completely frozen in the winter months uh, for the most of the year that is about 7 to 8 months are frozen as a result the kara sea Lat- laptev sea and east siberian sea remain frozen for the most of the months and they do not support easy transportation of various timber products even the most important river volga flows into caspian sea which is a closed lake and hence it cannot be uh, the logs cannot be transported transported for a great distance so these are the kind of ad- disadvantage disadvantages that russia faces when it comes to lumbering industry and in the modern days the ice breakers are used to make this particular route accessible to the regions of europe we know that barents sea is an important sea it has great oil resources which is of great environmental concern for the rest of the world because russia is trying to drill oil from this particular region and the barents sea is affected by warm current called as norwegian current which is a part of north atlantic drift so this particular current keeps this sea unfrozen for a particular part of the year i mean significant part of the year so this particular route can be used for transporting various material towards europe and atlantic region so the modern day ice breakers help greatly in this particular case and hence russia is slowly trying to develop or harness its coniferous forest resources so we can see all the rivers flow north towards and most of the coniferous trees exist in the central siberia so this particular region is affected by continentality and we can see there is no easy alternative transportation methods available and hence the russian coniferous industry is at a disadvantage let us take a question from the previous papers which one among the following covers the highest percentage of forest in the world one is temperate coniferous forest which we have talked till now that is the taiga climate has temperate sorry yeah temperate coniferous forest and there are temperate deciduous forests so deciduous forests occur within temperate and tropical regions and then we have tropical monsoon forest which is typical to parts of southeast asia and then we have tropical rain forest which is confined to the equatorial region for example we have selvas in the parts of amazon and then we have the congo region along with that certain parts of southeast asia have tropical rain forest so if you look at this we can say that the taiga belt is the most extensive belt and it has greater land area covered by forest so the answer would be coniferous forest so most of the forests come within the temperate region we know that they are just below the arctic circle and the temperate region exists within uh 23 and of sorry 22 and of degrees to 66 and half degrees north and south of the equator so this particular region is called as temperate region as a result the trees which are present here are conifers especially in the taiga region and we can see they extend for a greater length few thousand kilometers in the russian region and few thousand kilometers in the canadian region and these are the most extensive exten- extensive forest lands so if we compare temperate deciduous forest we know that temperate deciduous forest most mostly occur in the laurentian type of climate and laurentian type of climate is uh, is confined to only this particular region parts of northeast usa and canada and then certain parts of asiatic region so this is a very small region and hence uh, the number uh, the area under temperate deciduous forest is quite low compared to the taiga type of forest region and then we have tropical monsoon for forests which are mostly confined to the southeast asian regions which is comparatively so smaller compared to the taiga region and then we have tropical rain forests which occur in this particular regions and most of them are cleared for plantation industry and the area under uh, tropical rain forest is also quite negligible compared to the temperate coniferous forests moving on to tundra climate tundra climate is one that borders the taiga type of climatic region and we can see in the map so tundra climate occurs in the northern parts of uh, uh, pa- regions north of arctic circle and antarctic circle or regions south of antarctic circle mostly the antarctic region and the arctic region so here the temperature temperature I mean the uh, the climatic conditions are very extreme both summer and winter temperatures are very very low and most of the times the months about 8 to 10 months are frozen because of extreme temperatures and here the continents are affected by complete darkness or complete brightness because of rotation and revolution we know that earth is earth rotates on a tilted axis as a result in the summer months <coughs> the northern hemisphere that is the north pole region has sunlight about 6 months and a year whereas in the winter months it is tilted away from the sun and hence it doesn't have sunlight for about 6 months of the year 
so this is the typical feature of thunder type of climatic regions and frosts and blizzards are common and we know that frost is nothing but I mean permafrost is nothing but frozen soil uh, frost is nothing but significant snowfall as well as ice so the blizzards are gusty winds which carry significant snow along with them and they can touch up to 130 miles per hour it is a great disadvantage to the region of tundra climatic conditions so com coming to natural vegetation we know that the ground is bitten by frost as a result there is no uh, good, uh, good soil that can be used for natural vegetation and hence here the trees are absent and most of the natural vegetation occurs in the form of mosses and lichens which are a kind of fungus and fung most of them are kind of fungus and the animals here are only wolves and foxes and in certain regions they might be bears and the penguins only live in antarctic region they are absent in the arctic region this is because during the continental drift we know that most of the continents existed very close to the south pole and near the south pole penguins evolved in a very early time whereas when the continents started drifting towards north pole evolution process took place and the penguins were replaced by wild animals like uh, tigers lions etc and it when it moved when the continents moved towards the extreme north uh, these wild animals were replaced by bears wolves and foxes and we know that when there are bears wolves and foxes usually penguins cannot survive because these things completely kill the penguin population and in the southern hemisphere there were no bears initially because of extreme cold conditions and there was no evolution process so there were only penguins and they they didn't have any big uh, threats in the form of wild animals as a result penguins survived in the antarctic region whereas in the arctic region they cannot survive because of this particular wild I mean polar animals and they are significantly less population we know that here the population is insignificant significant because of extreme climatic conditions there are nomadic tribes like the Eskimos who live in igloos made of ice and most of their food is derived from fish and polar bears. So in the recent times this particular tundra type of climate is gaining importance because of, because of the natural resources which are available in this particular region. We know that in the most important regions the natural resources are depleted and people are looking for various alternatives and tundra climate is one significant alternative. So there are various important minerals mineral resources like gold and petroleum in the Alaska region and we have Barents Sea which has significant petroleum reserves and Russia is trying to uh, explore oil resources in this particular sea and then we have iron deposits in the Labrador region which is a part of eastern Canada and it is gaining importance because of the depleting iron reserves around the Great Lakes region and there are rich deposits of iron ore in the parts of Sweden and, and hence Sweden enjoys a prosperous export trade in iron and steel so modern icebreakers again facilitate the transportation of these particular raw materials as a result this, uh, these raw materials which were inaccessible few years ago are now made accessible. The most important feature with both tundra as well as taiga climates is the, the carbon sink or carbon sequestration which is carried out by this particular forest. We know that forests are very important because they store carbon in the form of various uh, carbohydrates and various products and this particular taiga climate or the tundra climate are significant because they can hold lot of carbon content in the soil so when natural vegetation decays it gives out methane and carbon dioxide both carbon dioxide and methane are examples for greenhouse gases and along with that methane is a highly combustible gas or inflammable gas and methane can lead to uh, forest fires and this was not a big risk few years ago when this particular forest uh, the, when the when the global warming was insignificant but during these years uh, uh, in the recent times the global warming becomes significant and this particular region has snow which is melting at a very high rate so the snow is the one which holds most of the carbon products within the soil but as the snow melts the soil becomes open for uh, the external atmosphere and most of the soil here is pt type because it contains lot of uh, lot of uh, timber type of uh, materials in the soil and when these rot they give out, give out carbon dioxide and methane so when the snow is melting all this particular methane and carbon dioxide are exposed to external environment and they can enter the atmosphere so this is great importance of taiga climate where they can act as carbon sink but due to global warming this carbon sink is convert getting converted into carbon source increasing the risk of further global warming 
so this is the most important ecological feature of the tundra and taiga type of climatic regions so this is all about taiga taiga and tundra type of climatic regions and thanks for watching my videos